Yo, what is going on, y'all? I'm Cavell Anderson, and we're back with another VV and Ecomi video. We're going to be checking out the VV verse trademark from my homie um, Crypto Show 84. He's actually rising up and really making his way to the top of the list of my favorite creators up there. Where you know my, my um, not fudge but wonderful. Um, yeah, I mean, he just puts out consistently some really, really interesting topics, um, and I, I like this because. Um, the, this one is going over the Vverse trademark. We're going to see if there's some information in here that may be bullish or maybe give us a share some light on some other things that maybe we haven't noticed before. Um, and he usually does a great job of tracking down this great information. So um, we're going to check this out. Be sure to subscribe to his channel. Show him some love. Um, drop that thumbs up, turn on notifications and all that. And yeah, let's get into it, y'all. Welcome back to Crypto Show 84. My name is Patrick. Nice to meet you. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the VVverse trademark. But before we do, just a quick reminder, I'm not a financial advisor. Nothing I say is financial advice. And always, always do what you are, do your own research. So the VVverse trademark comes courtesy of Andy Labata over on Twitter. Andy sent me the trademark to be able to do the video, so thank you, Andy. If you're not following Andy on Twitter, by all means, I would suggest following Andy. Lots of great insights into VV and Ecomi. So give Andy a follow on Twitter at Andy Labata. Let's take a look here at the VVverse trademark. So we have some different flags here in the top right covering different regions of the world. We have Australia, China, WIPO, which covers many countries, Canada, as well as the European Union, United Kingdom, and the United States of America. I know like three flags up there. That's crazy. Americans really be slow sometimes, man. That's crazy. So the VVverse trademark is the same across all different regions. However, there is one in particular that asks for more clarification, and we're going to get into that in the video later on. I think what's also important to understand with the VVverse trademark, uh, this is one of those things that goes on behind the scenes that we're not privy to as a community, and the company won't come out and directly say it. They do say some things in passing here and there with regards to licensing and trademarks and how you know, certain licenses in China for the anime is very difficult to obtain. So this is one of those things that also pertains to the timelines and why sometimes things get delayed. And I think this could be one of the reasons why the V-verse was delayed last year is because the trademark wasn't fully secured. So we'll get to that later on in the video. So let's take a look here with the V-verse trademark. We're gonna look at Australia. Now the definition is the same, like I said, pretty much across all the different regions. It covers the same classes and whatnot. So the V-verse trademark is filed in the category of three different classes, classes 42, 45, and nine. Class 42 covers scientific and technological services and research and design. Class 45 covers legal services, security services for the physical protection of tangible property and individuals. And class nine covers scientific, research and navigation, surveying, photographic, cinematographic, audiovisual, optical, a whole bunch more, as well as the apparatus and instruments for recording, transmitting, reproducing or processing sound, images or data, as well as recorded and downloadable media, computer software, blank digital or analog recording and storage media, and a whole bunch more after that as well. So three different classes, a lot to cover in those. As we scroll down the page, we can see there are also different trademark correspondence throughout different regions. Uh, the Australia one is AJ Park, so different correspondence. Keep in mind too, that also affects timelines, emails, meetings, uh, Zoom calls, and all that back and forth. So it also adds to the uh, timelines for communication aspects. Take a look at the trademark goods and services description. I'm not gonna read through all of them, but you can see the different descriptions for class 42, 45, and nine. Now the more or less um, the <clears throat> So digital currency, I, I mean, I just wanted to point that out. Digital currency. <clears throat> Verification authenticate like I'm seeing a lot of things in here that looks good for games like look at this Included in the fields of children's games and entertainment like literally <clears throat> But we know that this is what the V-verse is going to entail um, but it's also um Finance transaction and like I'm seeing some serious stuff consultancy This is this is this seems to cover a lot of businesses that can be created within the V-verse a lot of the stuff that we've speculated about now I understand a lot of people think that this is going to be GTA 2.0 because they don't really understand what a metaverse is and what it's supposed to be. Like, this is why people are assuming that this is going to be a glorified GTA. But the the fact of the matter is a metaverse, when and, and they when VV says metaverse, because they related it to Ready Player One, I understand that they really mean a real metaverse. Um, Ready Player One had a casino. Ready Player One had a company like Amazon 
where you could buy something within the metaverse and it would ship it to your front door. Like Ready Player One had games. They they had they had uh, so many different aspects to it, and then they had all the IP. So Vivi is really focusing on having a true metaverse, and that means things like this. Like you you could have um you could have a real estate company who uses Vivi's metaverse for their real estate digital real estate offices, so they could buy some land, have their real estate offices there, where you could buy land in the real world through the Viviverse. And why would that? Why would why would why would a company want to be there? Why would a company want to be in the Viviverse to do something like this? <clears throat> I'll tell you, they they would want to be in the Viviverse to do something like this because that's more and more foot traffic and more eyes that see you. Obviously, it it would have to be a point where, um, it would have to be a location where mainly adults pass. Um, so so probably more mature areas of the Viviverse. I it probably wouldn't be in the Viviverse near the theme parks or something because. Um, I mean, unless it's a thing part where a parent has to be there with their kid or something, but you would want to make sure it's not near a place where only kids are going to be. You would you would want it to be in a place where adults have to go to, maybe adults looking for certain services or something. Online medical advice. Like sometimes you you have doctors, like a doctor's office could be there where you know how doctors like this. If you don't, if you haven't been through the healthcare industry, especially in in um in the the states, healthcare is trash. Like you sometimes have to wait in there nine hours and then they that just to talk to a doctor for ten minutes. It's ridiculous. So if you can if you have these companies starting to come onto the Viviverse and ha and there's an area for, for some real world stuff too where these companies start to build in the Viviverse and it actually makes sense for their business, which is up to these individual companies if it makes sense for them to have a location within these metaverses. Not just the Viviverse, any metaverse, any metaverse. This is what it, this is what a metaverse entails, though. People are just looking at the digital aspect of the gaming side and stuff like that. For me, this has always been much bigger than just what we're seeing right now. It's about where the world is going. Um, the world is moving more and more digital, and it's not just about head, VR headsets and things like that. I think there's going to be multiple entry points. I think you will be able to access these metaverses from your phone. Maybe not the initial version. But you'll be able to access it from your phone. You'll be able to access this stuff from consoles. You'll be able to access this stuff like in multiple different ways. Obviously, the VR headset. So, yeah. I think this is a lot bigger than people realize. Same. Uh, obviously, there's more to the certain ones. But I'm just going to give the gist of it with Class 9. So, this cover is downloadable uh, and software for providing access to spending, purchasing, selling, retailing, as well as wholesaling. Uh, I thought that was interesting with the wholesaling aspect. Because wholesaling, wholesaling. That, that that's interesting. Like you know how many businesses built around wholesaling there are. Like so now having a, having the ability to wholesale within the Vverse. Like this this is something that comes with that. That's interesting. Like these is this it's so many businesses that's going to be built within a metaverse, and to see that the Vverse already comes prepared for this, that's insane. That's insane. So, um, yeah, I'm definitely interested in hearing more people talking about this trademark information and what exactly this means, because I, I it's it sounds to me like the Viviverse is well prepared to build be built out as a true metaverse, one of the first true metaverses. And the fact that they're this forward thinking and forward seeing where they know some of this stuff is going to be needed while other people are probably just making glorified GTAs. That's huge. That is massive. Because that's something that David, you mentioned before about uh, uh, certain comic book stores wanting to bulk buy uh, um, the comics themselves. So I just thought that was interesting to tie that in with the trademarks for the Beavers for wholesaling and communication to others of digital collectibles, digital tokens, digital files, digital currency, financial transactions, images, sound recordings. And of course, that uh, reminds me of the uh, NF music NFTs that David's referenced as well. So uh, tying in the music NFTs with this video recordings and virtual objects, as well as including in the fields of children's games and entertainment, downloadable augmented reality software for integrating electronic data with real world environments. Now the part with the children's games and entertainments, uh, that's a common area throughout all the trademarks. So you're gonna see that throughout the different ones, but that's a preset category that you have to choose when you're doing uh, your trademarks and that falls with the uh, class nine aspect as well. So let's take a look here at the next tab. So Australia, the VBverse trademark was filed in March of 2021. We can see here with China now, the China aspect actually falls under the WIPO. And we're going to see that on the next tab. So the WIPO 
trademark for the Vverse was filed back in May of 2021 and the WIPO if you're wondering stands for World Intellectual Property Organization so let's take a look here the WIPO trademark correspondent is again AJ Park uh, let's take a look here at the different countries that the WIPO covers for the Vverse trademark we have India we also have Brazil Republic of Korea Japan Singapore China and India and New Zealand I'll tell you why this is huge I have a lot of friends youtubers in the Asian community and I have a YouTube channel over there so I know how insane the viewership is um, talking to millions of players millions of gamers millions of games getting tens of millions of views um, I've seen a, a content creator blow up from over there who's blew up to like 20 million like when people thought PewDiePie was the biggest youtuber I literally knew a content creator that was bigger than him at the time and that's because the Asian side of YouTube doesn't get as much you know no notoriety as like the the other side but they're they're bigger there's mega stars there there's a lot of superstars there and they're into this stuff already like this is where this will be big at this like this is this could blow up in Asia and in India before anywhere else like PUBG Mobile was one of the biggest games in the world and people didn't know like I'm pretty sure at one point in time PUBG Mobile's viewerships was higher than um the regular PUBG and and but people were only talking about Shroud and things like that because he was the known American like people didn't know about the Asian side over there going off because obviously I I don't know I don't I don't like it's just Asia things that go on and is big in Asia isn't usually big in America so yeah so those countries being covered off of the WIPO That's huge. for the trademark and of course big opportunities in the Chinese and India markets uh, very large populations of course with China uh, lots and lots of different uh, brands especially with anime there so big opportunities there for the Vverse uh, game and aspect wise and VV commerce um, and just remember too you look at the different classes they're all the same throughout the different regions so just keep that in mind uh, for Canada, there is no trademark, it seems, for the Beaver, so it looks like there's an opportunity there. Obviously, I'm just joking. Taking a look here at the European Union, we have the Beaver's trademark filed back in October of 2020 for the Beaverse. So, October 2020 was pretty early on. So, the European Union for the Beaverse trademark. This comes from the office correspondent of Regime Beau in France. So again, another different region for these trademarks, uh, different communication, timelines, and of that nature. The United Kingdom trademark for the Beaverse came back in June of 2020. And you can see here, I highlighted the different definitions. It's pretty much the, well, it's actually identical to the first one with Australia. So again, you can see how these are all the same throughout different regions. It looks pretty straightforward. Uh, looks like they have no issues with these different regions and this one the correspondent is wilson gunn and let's take a look here and wilson gunn was in the united kingdom of course what's interesting about this is because we can see the countries we can actually kind of put some numbers together like one of the numbers guys it'll be interesting to see the population of all these places um and and how much of these places we think that vv can impact because it's an argument in the case to be made, depending on what content comes to Vivi, that Vivi is going to have something that everyone would want to take part in throughout their metaverse. So this would this could potentially they could draw in a bunch of people from all these different places like that. They, they could draw in the majority of the population there, um, at least the population that's able to enter the Vverse. But it also is going to be some restrictions based on the technologies that they use. Um, is it going to be something that you can have mobile? Because in Asia, like everybody has a mobile phone. Not everyone has a desktop though. So if you can access the Vverse through the mobile phone, that's going to be massive. If you can't, that's going to definitely restrict how much people can, can be onboarded into your metaverse. So hopefully they understand that different countries have access to different technologies and the Vverse, while the VR and everything is cool, it's just most important that the metaverse is accessible as many places as possible. So that's, that'll be interesting to see. So here with the U.S., the reason why I was mentioning um, the previous ones with the um, you know, same trademarks, uh, same lingo, the different classes, it was all looked pretty straightforward. There weren't any issues. Now with the U.S., and this is where the delay comes in, the Vverse was filed 
back in January of 2020. So the Vverse trademark was first filed in the US in January of 2020. And it looks like they've had some problems with some delays back and forth with the USPTO. So the USPTO asked for more clarification needed for the Vverse trademark. And this is where the lingo comes in. Now, the United States Patent and Trademark Office, that is the USPTO, is asking for more clarification with the Vverse trademark. And we have another office correspondent with Howard Mandelbaum out in, looks like, New York. So here are the timelines for the Vverse trademark for the United States. You can see here at the very bottom, it starts off back in January of 2020. That's when they have the application. February, they asked for the US. PTO asked for a uh, notification for um, response around the lingo. Going back into May now, we can see they got the letter, and then they're asking for more uh, information. You can see the different dates as throughout. Go up to October, published for opposition. We go to December, another two months. Emailed, required from applicant. Six months later, they get the TEAS extension that's been received. Uh, we go to another notice of extension request that was emailed. And we go to November now, so another, what, six months, give or take, June, July, August, September, October, November, yep. Another six months for November received, and that's 2021. Now we flash forward to May of 2022, another extension received, and then they asked for another uh, request for approval. So you can see how the timelines back and forth for these trademarks can be very time-consuming, can be complicated. Started off in January of 2020, it is now November 2022. And they're still going through these issues. Now, perhaps this hasn't been updated yet. This is why we're going to see a demo of the Vverse in just a few days at Anaheim Decon. So you can see how time consuming all of this can be and how much of a headache in the background that we don't see all of this with the trademark issues. So we're going to take a look here at the clarification needed by the USPTO. So here is the website, United States Patent and Trademark Office. Take a look here at the non final action request. All right, y'all, so definitely check out his channel if you want to see the rest of the information and exactly what VV hasn't provided clarification on. He's go, he's about to go into it here. I want you all to go check it out on his channel so you can see the juicy part of what's going on. Um, let me know what you all think, man. Let me know what you all think. And, and obviously, it's a lot of work going on in the background over at VV, but now we're starting to see, you know, exactly... You know exactly the type of battles that they're up against that they stay quiet about they don't talk about and things like that i don't know why everyone thinks that everything has to be made public like or made public at the time when you want it to be made public um when you're running a business you have to run a business like i get so many people saying oh you're not really running a business you, you why don't you tell anybody anything about it it's like i'm trying to build a business like why would i give somebody the opportunity to be a competitor like and not that i think that anyone stands a chance in hell of competing against me but it's like it's just the time and place, and people need to realize this. So this is what VV has been up against, and they've been killing it so far. So um, I'm definitely interested in seeing um, how it goes. Let me know your thoughts. Be sure to check out the rest on this channel. Drop that thumbs up, subscribe, and turn notifications, and I will catch you all on the next one. Peace out, fam.